I know that I'm intimidating when I, when I walk into court, obviously, so I, mm -hmm. I know my presence. I know that the other team feels it. We're going to start off like this. You're 7'4". Why have you been eating? Everything, really. Anything I can get a, get my hands on, I've been eating all my life. So can't be too picky when you're trying to <laughs> trying to feed a 7'4 body. Right. So, like, did you always have the height since you were, like, a youngin? Or did it just come in at a certain age? Uh, I've always been tall. I think the last time one of my teachers was tall as me was the second grade. So I've been the tallest in my class for a long time. But um, I really started to grow in middle school. Thinking uh, going into middle school, in Canada at least, it's grade seven and eight. So going into grade seven, I was like six foot. And then leaving grade eight, I was 6'10". So that's when I went from like tall to like really tall. And then it just didn't stop. Oh, actually kind of like, it stopped for a year, which was weird. I stopped at like 6'10" didn't move for a year and then the next year I went from like 6'10 to 7'1 and slowly since then I've been going like 7'1, 7'2, 7'3, now I'm 7'4. You were born in Canada so can you talk to us about how basketball life is like over there? Um, I mean it's, it's up and coming for sure. Um, Hockey is obviously number one sport in Canada. It's going to be like that for a long time but it's, uh, it's probably the number two sport right now. Everyone, Everyone's loving it. Uh, everyone's getting more into it and it's becoming more of a, like a culture. But if you could describe the difference between the basketball styles in Canada to here in America, what would you say that difference is? Always just the skill level. Uh, in America, like obviously, that's where everyone comes to um, get their offers, where everyone comes to get better. So it's um, like a lot of the good Canadians even will move to America. So it depletes the scene a little bit, but it's definitely more, it's more skill, it's faster. Uh, but it's also a lot more about like, uh, like the big glitz and glamour, like the big rankings and the colleges and stuff like that. Whereas in Canada, it's more of just uh, play basketball and try to do your best. I noticed there was like a trend uh, with Canadian basketball players coming to play high school basketball in America. Was there a specific Canadian player that inspired you to do that? Um, not really. Uh, my path to IMG was different. Uh, my coach. Mm -hmm had played underneath uh, a, one of the like head directors at IMG. So he kind of had it in for me. Uh, he got me into IMG. He said it would be like the greatest place for me. And then uh, I went to a camp there called The Workout. I got to tour the campus, got to play there, and I, uh, I agreed like it was, it was the best place for me. So I enrolled the next year, uh, spent two years there and just got better. So it was really the best thing for me. Uh, speaking about um, IMG, do you have one specific memory that you tend to like think about all the time? Mm. Uh, not exactly. Uh, there's a few like that are really fun. Like the game against Julian Newman was really fun. All the home games were always really fun. But um, yeah, it was just a, it was a great experience. But there wasn't like one memory that stuck out to me. In that Julian Newman game, how's the trash talk like? That was, that was a fun game. Um, it was, yeah, everyone was talking to each other. Everyone was um, throwing, throwing shade. Everyone, all the young fans were getting into it, getting with the oh, chance and stuff like that. But yeah, that was just a fun game. Do you remember a specific line that you heard from the opponent? You don't have to say no names, but. You don't really talk trash to me too often because. Um, or the biggest one on the court. <laughs> yeah, the bigger. <laughs> I don't really talk to so I was like, why would they come at me? But. There was an overage chance in the crowd for sure. There was a, like, you suck, Julian, in the chance. Like, the crowd was really getting into it all game. Just because we were struggling, so. Mm -hmm. That was a, that was fun. All right, um, last question on IMG. Do you have a favorite teammate from there, or? Uh, probably one of my closest friends there was um, Lynn Kidd. Was, there was a, like, everyone, everyone there, like, it was a family experience. Like, everyone loved each other. But yeah, Lynn was my guy. We still talk. We played. We just played him in um, against Clemson. Just like for our second game, we we lost unfortunately, but that was fun. Just getting playing with one of my one of my guys for my second college experience. Right. When you saw him, like, did you guys just click automatically, or like 
it was something that you guys both just bought into over a certain time. I mean, I think we're both kind of pretty similar. Like we're a little bit like shy when you first meet us, but it's uh, funny guys. We have big personalities. So. So when did you start playing basketball? Um, I started playing like not competitively. It was kind of just like a little rec league. I played halfway through my grade 10 year. But I didn't take it serious until really the summer of my grade 10, 10 11 year. Mm -hmm. That's when I went to, um, I played for my first AAU team, went to America, did a whole circuit, got a couple offers. Uh, and that's when I really started taking it serious. So that's kind of when I, the date that I marked that that summer was when I really started playing. What really motivated you to just start? Was it the height or was it someone in your ear telling you like, I think this is the route you have to go down? Uh, I mean, it was always, there was always people in my ear telling me I, I should play basketball. I'm, I'm tall, uh, I'm athletic, I'm not like gangly or anything like that. It was always telling me like I should play basketball, but uh, it really started when um, one of my closest friends back in Toronto, uh, his dad took over like a rec team and he was really getting on me about like, come on, come play, like it's gonna be fun. My dad's the coach, it's just gonna be like, a great time. So I was like, and I, at the time I had just quit baseball because my shoulder was giving me problems. So I was, um, I was looking for another sport to play. So I said, yeah, sure, that sounds great and went to my first practice. I loved it. Came back home, said I wanted to go back, kept playing, and then um, just took off from there. I know a lot of players, uh, although they play a sport in college, that may not be their favorite sport. So as you just mentioned, you played baseball. Is baseball still up there as number one for you? Uh, not quite. It was, uh, it was my favorite sport for a long time, but yeah, I just outgrew the sport a little bit, so it um, kind of tainted the memory of it. I was a, I was always a pretty good hitter, but then in my last year, I couldn't. My strength was so much so big that it was hard for me to um, hit the ball. Uh, my arms were so long because that was like the year that I really started spurting. And I was still trying to use my like my new body, so I was uh, I was struggling a little bit. But I was a I was always a pretty good pitcher, but then my arm went out, so it was. It was just one problem after the other, so I, right. I've always loved baseball. I always still do love it. Probably mm -hmm. my number two sport, but basketball is definitely number one. Is there a specific player that you model your game around? Uh, not really. I, I kind of just um, find what works for me. Like if it's from certain pe different people's games, like uh, finding what works for me, watching how it works in the league sometimes, but. I kind of just, I'm making it up as I go. This actually came to my mind when I was getting ready for this interview. Would you be willing to ever put on the same weight that Shaq put on during his prime years? Um, I mean, if I, if it was like guaranteed that it would be better for my basketball, but Shaq was always like a freak of nature. He, he was like 300 pounds and he could still jump high. He could still run the floor and he, was, he wouldn't get like, and he could still play like extended minutes. So he was um, a real like, once in a generation type player. So uh, I'm not sure if that would exactly benefit me, but, mm -hmm. but is my weight definitely something that I always watch. Like uh, I don't want to get too low. I want to get too high. I want to make sure that I can run the court. I can still be athletic, I can still be quick, while obviously having some, some meat in my bones. What did IMG Academy really help you with in regards to some parts of your game? Um, just. Uh, like getting a feel for the game. Back then, I didn't really know what was going on. It, it helped establish like basic kind of um, skills for me, like my my shoot tech, my shooting technique, my hook shots. I did a lot of those at uh, IMG, a lot of free throws. So it just helped me get like the uh, the basics that really helped me in college. As well as um, I put a lot of weight on when I got there. I think I was like a, uh, just under 250 when I first got there, and then I. Uh, flew up to 280 in two years, so I definitely put a lot of weight on, put a lot of muscle on, and helped me out. It's helped me in my college so far. Now at college, what have the coaches and the players that you've already met and played with taught you, if you could choose one thing that has already improved your game so much? 
uh, sealing of the pokes. It's like such a, it's such a basic thing, but uh, I never realized like how like, you can get you just a lot of easy buckets, like a lot of five foot, 10 foot jump shot or hook shots, a lot of uh, fouls, usually the free throws and just um, getting deep position in the paint can really just uh, benefit your game. And that's really one thing that I focused on and one thing that's really helped me so far. Is there anything in particular that you want to do in game that you've been thinking about for a while that you haven't done yet? I mean, eventually, obviously, it's going to be a three-point shot. I want to want to get to where I can start knocking those down, but uh, that's obviously not my game right now. I need to spend more time on that and work on that before before I start shooting those in the game. If I want to if I want to keep my minutes, but um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, mm, I, I actually, they really wanted me to get like a windmill going, but <laughs> that's, that's not my, my skill set. Oh, right, they want you to get fancy already, damn. <laughs> yeah, they were saying like, oh, if it's seven four to windmill, that's me on every, right. every day. But, <laughs> uh, I can see what they was thinking though, but like, damn, like that right away? Yeah, that's not, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't have right. that type of I don't got that package yet, but it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. Maybe, maybe hopefully. <laughs> right. I was going to ask you about uh, your height again. Um, only a few players have reached 7'4 before. And when I think back about like the history of the game, I think about players like Yao Ming. So do you tend to watch players that are about your height now that you're, you know, 7'4? Yeah, for sure. I mean, watch big people like obviously there's Boban in the league right now. There's oh, yeah, tons of tall sure. centers. Um, Yao Ming, obviously, was a big, uh, big presence. And yeah, watching those guys really helped me kind of understand like the little things that they do that people might not see, like their footwork and their um, like their form, and that's really helped me um, kind of if, like if they can do it, I can do it kind of thing. Knowing that you're walking into every game, probably being the tallest person there, player there, what is your mentality when you got, come into the game? Yeah, it's a big confidence booster especially if the um, other team doesn't really have someone who can match up with me size-wise. Mm -hmm. uh, it gives me a lot of confidence knowing that I can just get my shot off uh, when I want. And um, it helps me like just be, um, I know that I'm intimidating when I, when I walk in the court, obviously. So uh, mm -hmm. I know my presence. I know that the other team feels it, so it really helps. Right, I, I see you got like a mean mug going on when you get into the game. So <laughs> do other players like look at you like, and all once once they see you, or... yeah. Um, a few times people are like, because I no one really knew me. A lot of people know like the people uh -huh. around the, like high school scene. No one mm -hmm. really knew who I was. So people when they first see me, because they see on the scouting report they see seven three, but once you see uh -huh. that in person, it's like so it's, it's a lot yeah. more. What do you think Canada needs to do to produce more talent? I think it needs to do the same thing that's it's been doing. It's um produce a lot of great NBA players like Andrew Wiggins, Jamal Murray, Kelly Olenek, Dwight Powell. They're going to have an Olympic team this year for the first time, I think, ever. And they're going to look to make a good run in the uh, Olympics uh, coming up. But I think it needs to keep doing what it's doing and just uh, producing NBA talent. If you could go back in time and have one conversation with 10th grade Zach about basketball, what piece of advice would you give him and why? Um, I mean, just keep grinding. It's uh, a lot of times you don't see the results instantly. You don't, um, you feel like, why am I doing this? It's not really helping me, but um, just keeping like t taking one step at a time um, and just appreciate the process and appreciate the, uh, the results long term. I remember in 10th grade, I, I thought it was crazy if I dunked the ball. I was like, I would get so like, I would get so happy. I would get so excited every time I dunked. I think I had like two dunks all year and it was like in a rec league where it was like, the tallest guy was six, seven on the other team at max. So um, coming from that to where I've been, where dunking is a fairly regular thing for me. That's been, uh, that's just something I can look back on and be like, yeah, I've, I've definitely progressed so far. Where can people find you? Where can they get you on Instagram? 
My Instagram's uh, Zach underscore E D Z A C H underscore E D E Y. Same with my Twitter. Uh, you can reach out to me. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you, Zach, again. And um, it was an honor. <laughs> thank you. I've been watching SB Nation for a little bit too. <laughs> <laughs>